In our previous video, we presented a hypothesis, a theory believed by many, one of a now lost or possibly hidden race of ancient giants. Surprisingly, however, recently, although China is seen as an infamously secretive country, with many tombs and ancient pyramids of gargantuan proportions rarely aerial photographed, let alone explored, it seems that they have, at last, stolen the archaeological world stage with the announcement of a discovery which we may relish, but those whom these remains rest just beyond the clutches of, we would presume rather get a hold of themselves to study and then store away in hidden archives, far from public view, an ongoing effort we have personally read of, dating back to the early 1900s. An ancient graveyard, complete with over 500 giant human remains, has not only been accidentally discovered, but publicly exhumed and most crucial of all, photographed for all the world to see within China. Could this be a retaliatory move with other motives at play? If our previously mentioned theory is true, it would enable man to explain the inexplicably, seemingly impossible size of many of the world's megaliths, and indeed still standing megalithic structures of the world. How a pyramidal, treasury, and many other ancient architectures, lintels, and top stones, often weighing many hundreds of tons, were not only transported from quarries many hundreds of miles, but placed aloft many meters with seeming ease. Furthermore, we have in the past not only postulated and have also presented reams of witness testimony and photographic cooperation, still to be found in newspaper archives across the Western world, describing these finds, but also the Smithsonian's efficiency in not only dealing with the matter, but disappearance of any further reporting, thus expiration. This also supporting the reason for lost pieces of the puzzle which is inhibiting us from unlocking the secrets to the site's construction. Perhaps we may never know the true motivations for such a controversial exposure in China. But nonetheless, the resulting fallout of proof presented for our community is a step closer to the truth. The untangling of a tired and tangled web of lies in which many have weaved. For at the bottom of Pandora's box, there is always hope. Countless talented, valiant souls spanning all throughout modern history have been publicly lambasted for their troubles. Not only are such readings and results regularly scoffed at, and any subsequent finding, all stemming from their honest admittance that their data showed evidence of inhabitation with, quote, underestimated prehistoric dates. Many of these artifacts and ruins, claimed as being a mere few centuries old, we have, due to extensive research into similarities and differentiations at many of these sites, managed to locate signature stonework within the structure's outer walls, clearly submerged and perfectly preserved for untold millennia. Indicative of many inexplicable sites around the world, which some even claim are upwards of 300 million years old. The Great Pyramids, along with their Great Sphinx, we feel, with the substantial evidence we have previously put forward, is a treasure trove of examples for when one becomes aware of Giza's anomalies at least, can expose those fed a lie, the impossibilities within said conspiracy theory, and begin to realize more and more unexplainable anomalies, helping others to realize just how impossibly difficult these structures would have been to create. A feat when considered by many, especially those with a good idea for the sheer size of this place, find the reality that the plateau was possibly man-made very hard to conceive. Subsequently, still concealing many secrets, which we feel, is the purpose of the plateau being created in the first place. And although it seemingly spans far from the feet of the gigantic pyramidic trio and their accompanying sphinx, we feel this was deliberate and not naturally formed. According to computer engines, the stresses within the Great Pyramid itself were perfectly calculated. However, the main strut or lintel in the Grand Gallery is cracked, 
indicating pulley systems or other heavy technology was still atop the structure once built. This extra weight has been hypothesized was an oversight. Furthermore, any attempts to reconstruct these incredible buildings by using computer systems to simulate supposed slave attempts, we still, to this day, cannot find a valid working technique. However, if one ups the size of the being, their strength, and indeed their intellect, not only were the pyramids within reach, but also many other baffling megalithic areas, such as polygonal masonry, all could be explained. Additionally, along with this hypothesis, many giant-sized sarcophagi have been found throughout Giza, yet we feel covered up, dismissed as clearly what they are tombs, in favor of explaining them away as storage cases. Who built ancient Egypt? When did they build it? How did they build it? Questions which need to be answered. Questions which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered a vast array of evidence which suggests the past existence of giants. Yet, alas, much of what is or has now either unfortunately been suppressed, destroyed, stolen, or forgotten about, with the remains of their initial discoveries now often only to be found remaining, proverbially, cast in stone in the form of the library archives of the world and the news reports now digitally preserved within. Often follow-up reports abruptly ceased after the mention of the rapid arrival and insatiable interest of the Smithsonian, among others in said finds. However, now, thanks to the popularity of such subjects, the power and speed of modern technology, such finds made during excavations involving a large array of individuals make modern cover-ups difficult and are rarely accomplished. With the only modern, almost openly admitted one of note, having followed the discovery of the supposed tomb of Osiris, when all media was immediately banned from the site. When permitted back, the tomb had already been penetrated and was subsequently claimed as having been found empty, supposedly previously looted. This regardless of its near impenetrability, with Gantenbrink only making it successful with modern robotics. But I digress. Working in cooperation, a team involving the Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, a team from the Penn Museum, University of Pennsylvania, among others, discovered a sarcophagus academically claimed as having belonged to a, quote, King Sobekteheb probably Sobekteheb, the first dated 1780 BC during the 13th dynasty. What we find astonishing regarding the find, however, is its sheer size. Carved from a single quarried piece of Aswan granite, initially weighing hundreds of tons, this finished tomb still weighs a minimum of 60 tons. It was somehow transported to the burial site and placed seemingly with delicacy where it now lay. Its resting place, inner chamber, also some three meters in length. The baffling enigmas of why such size? How were they moved? To explain how these feats were accomplished is far less difficult challenge if one incorporates into their postulations the possibility that the size of these tombs were, in fact, made to measure, indeed a match, to the height and scale of the civilization who buried them. Could the inclusion of ancient giants into the many other theories surrounding the mysteries of Giza solve the puzzle we still can't solve of how these stones were moved? It is a hypothesis which we find very fitting. We most recently covered the remarkable discovery, fortunately made in the presence of numerous parties, from a number of international research panels, including media personnel. Fortunate for reasons we previously covered in our last video regarding the difficulty when such an event occurs in such a situation to suppress it in the modern age, and the subsequent unusual characteristics of said discovery. A discovery the world has been fortunate to witness, further cementing mounting evidence for the past existence of an ancient giant civilization. With this next discovery, 
although completely different in characteristics, we feel its scale alone, with other intriguing features, makes it as equally perplexing. An apparent polar opposite approach in some areas, such as methodology and symbology, even including stone selected. Yet another enigmatic mystery currently sprouting up all over the Giza Plateau. What we found initially interesting was, just like the other enormous tomb we have covered prior, its sheer size, estimated at nearly 9 feet tall and 3.5 feet wide just on the insides. Amazingly, it also initially appeared and was initially presumed to have still somehow been a mysteriously hermetically sealed tomb. This is where the open presses line runs out, unfortunately, for although it would seem the sarcophagus has indeed been opened, it has been done privately by the Smithsonian Institute. The details of what was found inside, what sort of remains, and indeed their claimed identity, continue to be a closely guarded secret and a subject of hot debate, with the Smithsonian merely stating, further examinations on the body found inside are being conducted. According to the head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, quote, there has been a remarkable find in the coastal city of Alexandria. During a routine excavation, experts uncovered a baffling Ptolemaic stone sarcophagus. It has been hailed as a major find, as it can provide insights into the great Hellenistic period in Egypt and its unique culture." End quote. Regardless of academic historians and certain institutions instantly pushing the notion that they know all about this incredible find, and also what exactly could have been found within that black sarcophagus, we find the ordeal highly compelling. <laughs>